Hey everyone, this is Snark with Snark's Domain. Uh, today we're going to be testing out something a little bit different. We're going to be trying thermal paste added to both sides of the OEM thermal pads and see what the effect is. And I'll give you a couple reasons why this might be a good idea sometimes. All right, so today uh, I'm going to be testing out using thermal paste along with the stock thermal pads to see what the effect would be. Uh, a a longtime viewer, Shumbo8324, requested this like, I don't know, nine, ten months ago, long enough to uh, grow an entire human being. So it's been a while. But uh, yeah, today we're going to take apart a stock Zotac 3070 Ti Amp Hollow Edition that uh, a good friend of mine was willing to lend me to uh, play around with. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be taking it apart, cleaning it up really good, and then applying uh, Arctic MX4 thermal paste on either side of the stock pads, reassembling it, and then testing it out. Now, I'm only going to do the thermal pads on the VRAM, um, mostly so I don't make a big mess, but also because that's where the the temperature sensors that I'm interested in for the most part are located. So we're going to do that. And then after we do all that testing, I'm going to take it apart again, clean it up really good. And then I'm going to be applying uh, conformal coating. Uh, this one specifically from MG Chemicals, uh, 422C. Uh, this stuff is phosphorescent under UV light uh, or black light. So makes it really easy to see where you've applied it, where you haven't. And then after that, we're going to be applying uh, PTM 7950 sheet to the core and Upsiren UX Pro thermal putty to everywhere else on the card, including the back plate and then testing. So we're going to have stock tests, pad with paste tests, and putty and PTM tests, and then compare the results. Now, before we get into the testing, let's talk about why this might be a good idea um, sometimes. Eh, let's say you ran into an issue where you're playing games and your core temperature is like really high. You've owned the card for a few years and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to repaste the GPU. You know, I'm going to leave the stock pads. I'm happy with the thermals. So you take the card apart and you go to repaste it only to find that maybe the stock pads are crumbling or torn or have leaked a bunch of oil that you have then wiped up. So then, you know, your pads are not going to be performing as well in those scenarios. And you just need a quick fix because you don't want to be down for what, a couple weeks or I guess with Amazon Prime a few days. Maybe you're maybe it's the weekend and you're going to be you know, going to a LAN party, you need your card up and running. So slap on some thermal paste and like full send, go back to playing your game. So that's one reason. Uh, another reason would be that you did buy thermal pads. Uh, you did all the research that you could do uh, and you ordered your pads, you took your card apart, cleaned it up, took the stock thermal pads off and I and I strongly recommend always saving those um, either in parchment paper or wax paper and then in a big Ziploc bag just in case you need them so try and be delicate when you do take them off it's also good for measuring sizes by the way uh, later down the road if you ever want to switch back to pads after using thermal putty let's say but you have a reassembled your card with some high performance thermal pads that everyone's saying are the best thing since sliced bread you get it all together and you run into core contact issues where all of a sudden yeah your your vram thermals are great but your core is is off the charts and uh is is a little mini volcano and you're kind of stuck between either i don't know go well you're going to be going back to the stock pads unless you have a large selection of these other thermal pads that you might have purchased so there's, there's a couple scenarios where this could save you from a bunch of downtime uh, of not being able to use your card to play. So let's get into the testing. Uh, first, 
we're going to be doing the stock tests here. So uh, this is just with stock settings, ambient temperature 23.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, the GPU temperature maxed out at 61 degrees Celsius and the memory junction temperature maxed out at 78 degrees Celsius uh, in Fermark for running 90 minutes. Now this is on a open air test bench and I'll be making a video specifically about the test bench and show you guys some pictures of that at another time. Uh, then I mined Ethereum Classic and made a whole negative, I don't know, 45 cents or something like that in power. Doesn't really make any money when, you're, when I mine this stuff. And I use the a typical but like minimal memory overclock of plus 800 and then I power limited it to 60%. So um, yeah, the maximum GPU temperature was 46.6 degrees Celsius on the core and a maximum of 92 degrees Celsius on the memory junction temperature. And that was after mining for nine hours with an ambient temperature of 23.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, next, I ran Fermark again with the same memory overclock, that plus 800, and this time the power limit all the way up to 100%. And the GPU or the core maxed out at 62.1 degrees Celsius, memory junction temperature 80 degrees Celsius, hotspot 70 degrees Celsius again in that 23.5 degrees Celsius ambient temperature. So then I took the card apart and uh, cleaned it up and repasted it with MX4 on the core and then used MX4 on either side of the VRAM thermal pads. Here you can see a close-up picture of the OEM core contact with the paste. You can see there's a bit of drying along the right hand side um, where it looks sort of opaque with that gray. That's what baking or drying looks like at the start of it. That It might still transfer heat okay, possibly, but uh, it was starting to dry. And this card is maybe, I don't know, a year and a half old, I think. And that's a close up of the cooler there. A couple more shots of that. And then this is a close up of the GDDR6X VRAM. You can see some light oiling on the VRAM. And here we've had it all cleaned up and I've applied some paste. I've spread it out nice and evenly and thin, put the pads on. And then for the cooler side, it was easier to apply to the cool, the cold plate itself uh, for the VRAM thermal pads. As you can see there, I then reassembled the card and got it up in mining for two hours. Uh, ambient temperature 23.6 degrees Celsius, the 800 uh, memory overclock, power limited to 60%. We've got a core temperature maxing out at 46.3 degrees Celsius and the GPU memory junction temperature at 88 degrees Celsius. Hotspot 57.3 degrees Celsius. Then we switch to Fermark for three hours with an ambient temperature of 23.3 degrees Celsius. The core maxing out at 63 degrees Celsius, memory junction temperature maxing out at 78 degrees Celsius, hotspot maxing out at 71.8 degrees Celsius. So, uh, yeah, it's not bad actually. I mean, we've lowered our temperature while mining significantly, I would say, by six degrees Celsius, and we haven't ruined the thermals in Fermark completely. It's it's still, it's going to be playable. Uh, it'll get the job done. You can be back and playing. I wouldn't use this as a long-term solution, uh, but this will give you time to order your pads, putty, PTM, phase change, you know, 3D graphite, shims, whatever you want to go with. This gives you time to get set up for your next attempt at repadding and pasting. At this point, I took the card back apart and cleaned it all up. All right, so you guys can see a close-up of the back plate here. And this is just behind where the VRAM is. Uh, you can see the stock pads have pulled apart a little bit and baked on to the PCB right around all these really tiny components. So this is one thing that can happen with thermal pads. Um, and this is another reason, let's say you ran into this and you needed to use the OEM pads. This would be a scenario where you could use 
some thermal paste temporarily until you could order some replacement product. Uh, so I cleaned all this up with isopropyl alcohol. I use 99.5% pure alcohol. And then I'll either use Q-tips or a toothbrush. And at the worst case scenario, I'll use a toothpick. But uh, you have to be very careful. You're not applying too much force to any of these components. And too much is is like really easy to do. You got to be very delicate with it. So you could also maybe fill us a little spray bottle with isopropyl alcohol and try and spray it with like a jet nozzle sort of setting and try and kind of like pressure wash it off or if you had an ultrasonic cleaner that would be uh, a good way to do it too um, some people might use solvents I wouldn't get into that unless you're very confident and know um, what solvents you're using and whether they're going to affect anything uh, you'd have to be very cautious when you're using solvents um, some of them are strong enough to melt coatings and uh, other types of things on the tiny components of the PCB anyways so we're gonna be cleaning the card up and then I'm getting out the MG chemical 422 C conformal coating I took one of the brushes and chopped it down and made it as tiny as I could that's the one on the upper right there next to the bottle and here is a snapshot of the data sheet for it. So it's good to be used in a temperature range of minus 40 degrees Celsius all the way up to plus 200 degrees Celsius. And you can do multiple coatings, but if you do, you want to wait two minutes before applying a second coat. You have to allow the solvent in the conformal coating to evaporate. Um, I would give it longer than two minutes, but you shouldn't leave it longer than I believe it's 10 minutes and then you can either cure it with heat or how I'm choosing to cure it is wait 24 hours at room temperature and uh, yeah it's that's how I've been doing it anyways so this is what it looks like under UV light that's very bright it's very easy to see where you've coated it uh, there's a snapshot of the back plate. You can see I didn't coat where the VRAM on the back plate uh, would be. This could be a slight thermal insulator, and I want to get as much heat as possible through the through to the back plate to just help cooling the VRAM. I'm not too worried about the core on this one. And here's a close up of the GDDR six X VRAM on the core side. And here is a little short video of me rolling thermal putty. Um, in this case, I used wax paper because I didn't have any parchment paper left. Uh, it worked fine. I prefer parchment paper, I think. But uh, you can ever use, I, you know, I just don't like the idea of wax. Somehow, it shouldn't, but somehow getting uh, rubbed and mixed into the putty. The putty could be theoretically slightly abrasive, um, but not much. And then here's uh, another picture showing the back plate uh, application of thermal putty. And you can kind of see how it lines up if I flip that upside down and place it on the card with those areas that are uncoated. And here's the core side. And here's a little short clip of me applying the PTM 7950, uh, the sheet. Now I've peeled the bottom plastic sheet off of this and I'm just rubbing the on top of the top layer of plastic and trying to get as many bubbles out as I can. I didn't do a great job this time getting all the tiny little bubbles, but it actually had uh, really good performance. So, but you could use, you know, a little rubber squeegee or maybe even a credit card with moderate to light pressure. Here's a little picture showing what I achieved. So you can see tiny little bubbles there. Nothing major, but still not a perfect application. I think as I use this product more or other phase change materials like Upsiren PCM1, um, after we test that, we'll find out if it's good. But I'll get better at applying this stuff. Just a little top down just before I reassemble the card. And there's fully reassembled. 
All right, so now we're going to be testing it um, and we're mining Ethereum Classic for 12 hours with the 800 uh, megahertz memory overclock and the 60% power limit. Ambient temperature this time was 22.6 degrees Celsius and the GPU temperature topped out at 46.2 degrees Celsius, memory junction temperature 78 degrees Celsius, and GPU hotspot temperature 55.8 degrees Celsius. So uh, doing pretty good there. And then Fermark running for six hours after the 12 hours of mining. So it was already warmed up. Uh, the, I, I kind of messed up the snapshot of HW info, but we can see that the max GPU temperature on Fermark is showing 60 degrees. Uh, MSI afterburner showing max of 62. Yeah, it sucks that I didn't get better data on that, unfortunately. So here we've got an overview chart of our thermal results with the different tests. Uh, up top you can see with the stock pads and stock settings running for Mark, we had a core temperature of 61 degrees Celsius, memory junction temperature of 78 degrees Celsius, and a hot spot of 68.8 degrees Celsius. Uh, and it was using 263 watts at the time. That's in software, of course, uh, using HW info. Now with mining, uh, we were consistently using 185.8 watts on the GPU. Uh, and the core was, you know, basically 46.3 plus or minus degrees Celsius. But the memory junction temperature with the stock pads was 92 degrees Celsius. When we put paste and pad on, it was 88 degrees Celsius. And with the PTM and the UX Pro, it was 78 degrees Celsius. And our hot spot was plus or minus 56 degrees Celsius. So yeah, much better temperatures on the memory for mining purposes. So now when we look at running Fermark with the stock pads with the memory overclock, we had a core temperature of 62.1 degrees Celsius. With the paste and pad, the core went up to 63 degrees Celsius. With the PTM and UX Pro, it went back down to 62. Although that's with an ambient temperature almost, a, well, basically a full degree lower. So I would call that a 63 to be fair. So we had a slight increase in core temperature, relative core temperature anyways. Uh, now the memory junction temperature with the stock pads memory overclock was 80 degrees Celsius with the paste and pad 78 degrees Celsius. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get good data for the memory junction temperature or the hotspot on the PTM UX Pro for Mark test. The stock pads with the memory overclock hotspot was at 70 degrees Celsius, uh, paste and pad 71.8 degrees Celsius. And again, I didn't get that temperature for the PTM UX Pro test. But the most interesting part is the watts. So running for Mark stock pads with the memory overclock, 269.2 watts in software with the paste and pad 272.6 watts um, I don't have the watts again for the PTM UX Pro but I'm willing to bet it's probably slightly higher by a few more watts so what this means is it's probably getting a higher average uh, core clock and maybe even memory clock I'd have to go back and look so maybe I'll try and see if I can get this card back for another test run and uh, see if I can get some more data to fill in this chart. But anyways, hopefully you guys found that video um, entertaining at the least and helpful at the most. And I will catch you guys on the next one.